Proving lines parallel, and we have three converse theorems. This is lesson 3.3b, and you can click the description to go to the geometry playlist to see the six previous videos you missed for chapter 3 if you did. And the converse of a theorem is found by swapping the hypothesis and conclusion. If the converse is true, it must be stated in a postulate or proved as a separate theorem. So here we have a conditional statement. We have a hypothesis and a conclusion. The hypothesis is the if. The conclusion is the then. If the creature gives live birth, then the creature is a mammal. That's true. If it has live birth, it's a mammal. That's the definition of a mammal. The converse of this would be swapping the conclusion and the hypothesis, so the conclusion is first. If the creature is a mammal, then the creature gives live birth. That's also true. But remember, when the converse is true, it must be stated as a postulate or proved as a separate theorem. So both the conditional statement and its converse are true. Now, in lesson 3.2a and 3.2b, see we're at 3.3b now, parallel lines and transversals were used to prove that angles were congruent. Now we'll use congruent angles to prove that lines are parallel. I'm going to flip it around, okay? So here's the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. The theorem says if two coplanar lines are cut by a transversal so that a pair of alternate interior angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So we can see angle 1 and angle 2 in our hypothesis here, and they're alternate interior angles. They're in the interior of the two parallel lines, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal. And because they're congruent, our conclusion is that M is parallel to N. Now, when we were just doing the regular alternate interior angles theorem, it said if M and N are parallel and cut by a transversal, then angle 1 and angle 2 would be congruent. Now we're saying because they're congruent, the lines are parallel. See, we flipped it around. Here's the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. If two coplanar lines are cut by a transversal, so that a pair of alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. So we've got angles 3 and 4. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, so they're alternate, and they're on the exterior of the two parallel lines, so they're alternate exterior angles. If these two angles are congruent, then M is parallel to N. See? When we were just doing the alternate exterior angles, we said that if M was parallel to N, then angle 3 was congruent to angle 4. See, now we flipped it around and said because they're congruent, those are parallel. All right? Here is the converse of the same side interior angles theorem. It says if two coplanar lines are cut by a transversal so that a pair of same side interior angles are supplementary, then the two lines are parallel. So here we've got the interior and angles 5 and 6, they're on the same side of the transversal, they're on the interior, and the measure of angle 5 plus the measure of angle 6 equals 180 degrees. And because of that, our conclusion is that M is parallel to N. We can write a paragraph proof for the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. Take a look at the drawing. We can see the two parallel lines in our transversal. We see angles 1, angle 3, and angle 2. We're given that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. So this and this, those two angles are congruent. And you know what? They're alternate exterior angles, aren't they? 1 and 2. We need to prove that L is parallel to M. So here's our paragraph proof. It's given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That was given. And vertical angles are congruent. So angles 1 and 3 are congruent. And by the transitive property of congruence, angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So L is parallel to M by the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So basically what we're saying is, because these are vertical angles, 1 is congruent to 3. And 2 is congruent to 3. It's the transitive property of congruence. Therefore, L is parallel to M. Okay? And it helps to write these down because if you ever come across this problem, you'll have it all spelled out and you'll have the answer. Okay?
We can use the given information and theorems we've learned to show that R is parallel to S. So here we have R and S, and you can see we have angle 2 and angle 6 here. They're on the interior, and they're on opposite sides of the transversal, aren't they? So they're alternate interior angles. So we have angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, and that's because they're alternate interior angles. So R is parallel to S because of the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. See, if they're congruent, then R and S are parallel. Here we have a given that measure of angle 6 is equal to this angle right here, 6x plus 18 degrees. And the measure of angle 7 is 9x plus 12, and we're also given that x is equal to 10. So we can substitute 10 for x in both expressions. For measure of angle 6, we get 6 times 10, which is 60 plus 18. That's 78 degrees. And the measure of angle 7 is 9 times 10 plus 12, which is 90 plus 12, which is 102 degrees. Now, because we've got 6 and 7, they're on the same side in the interior, we know that they should equal 180 degrees, same side interior, okay? When we add the measure of angle 6 plus the measure of angle 7, we get 78 degrees plus 102 degrees, that's 180 degrees. So angle 6 and angle 7 are same side interior angles. And R is parallel to S, that's the converse of same side interior angles theorem. Okay, now we have a parallel lines proof. And you might want to copy this down because if you ever have this for a homework problem, you've got it all spelled out and explained to you. So it's given that L is parallel to M. And it's also given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So we can see angle 1 and angle 3. And we need to prove that R is parallel to P. We need to prove that the two red ones are parallel. So here's our proof with our statements and reasons. It's a two-column proof. It's given that L is parallel to M. That's number one, and our reason that it's given. Number two is angle one is congruent to angle two. Those are corresponding angles. They're both above the transversal, and they're both on the left side of their lines. See that? So that's the corresponding angle's postulate. The third statement is angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Well, that's given. And our fourth statement is angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. That's the transitive property of congruence. See, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and 3, then angle 2 is congruent to 3. The transitive property is, you know, A equals B, then B equals C, then A equals C. They all equal the same thing. And that brings us to number five, R is parallel to P, because of the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. If the angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. All right? Now here we have a boat with some oars, and a line through the center of the boat forms a transversal to the two oars on each side. And we show the oars are parallel. So if we draw a line directly through this boat, we can use these two oars like this, and we have angle 1 and angle 2. And it's given that the measure of angle 1 is 3x plus 13 degrees, and the measure of angle 2 is 5x minus 5 degrees. And it's also given that x is equal to 9. Angle 1 and angle 2 are corresponding angles. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they're both on the bottom of their lines. And if angle 1 and angle 2, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then the oars are parallel. We substitute 9 for x in each expression, so the measure of angle 1 is going to equal 3 times 9 plus 13. That's 27 plus 13, that's 40 degrees. And the measure of angle 2 is 5 times 9 minus 5, that's 45 minus 5, that's also 40 degrees. And the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2, so angle 1 is congruent to 2. If they're equal, they're congruent, right? And this corresponding angles are congruent, so the oars are parallel by the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. Okay? So the four angle relationships that would prove two lines are parallel, the first one is a pair of corresponding angles that are congruent. Two is a pair of alternate interior angles that are congruent. 
three is a pair of alternate exterior angles that are congruent, and four is a pair of same side interior angles that are supplementary. They total 180 degrees. So those are the four angle relationships that would prove two lines are parallel. You might want to write that down and pause the video, okay, because it's good information for you. So our next video, we're going to talk about the rhombus method to construct parallel lines. It's going to be lesson 3.3c. And I hope I explained it well, and I hope you're taking good notes. All these theorems are going to help you in these postulates. They should be in your notes so that you can use them to do proofs. Okay? Have a really wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.